What does a developer do day to day? We do a lot of stuff with Git, a lot. So let's talk about that. Stay tuned. Before we get started, I want you to be a part of my tribe, so click that subscribe button. Do it, do it. And if you want notifications, click the little bell. So today we're gonna to talk about Git. I feel like there are a lot of resources out there on Git, like how to install Git, what is Git, and how to connect it to GitHub, so I'm not gonna talk about that. I'm gonna talk about the things that you don't get to learn about until you're on a team environment, like say you get a new job or you um, are in a conference where you have to be a part of a team. I think it's important to learn how to work with Git from that perspective instead of just alone. So we're gonna start by talking about Git commits. I think that's a perfect way to segue into more Git stuff because they are in fact really important. Um, you want to structure them in such a way that they are understandable from a new developer's perspective. So let me give you tips on that. So I think a great way to learn about commit messages is through the git log. You can type in git log, git log, and it'll show you every single uh, commit that you've made to your project. And it'll also show you the different commits that other people have made to your project. But I think the better way is to make this git log look prettier. So we're gonna exit the git log by just pushing Q, and then we're gonna type in this really long command. It's gonna make it look pretty. It's git, con git config space dash dash global space alias dot log with two G's space single quotation marks log space dash dash online space dash dash graph space dash dash decorate close quotation marks. I don't want you to have to keep typing that in um, the everything in the quotation marks you would have to type in every time you want this particular view so that's why we're creating an alias once you put that in you should be able to type in git log and see the different view of all your logs so as you can see it shows you every single commit but in short form you're no longer going to see all the author's names and the dates and stuff you're just going to see the commit message and the commit hash so you also see that um, these little dotted lines where somebody, me in this case, uh, made a new branch, they did their commits, and then they merged back into master. And I think this is a great view for you to understand how important git commits are to a team. So actually I didn't learn that alias and the 5072 rule until I got into a team at my first job. If you're feeling me on that one and you're happy you learned about it, go ahead and put getting better in the comments below. And now let's start talking about other ways to make your commit messages nicer and more stylized for a team. A lot of teams use the 5072 rule and that is where your commit messages should not be longer than 50 characters and the body of your commit messages should wrap at 72 characters. Now, there are a lot of IDEs that will help you style that and will cut you off at 50 characters or they'll, act, they'll wrap it for you. As far as inside of the terminal, there's really not a good way to do that. So I don't um, enforce that myself, but I think it's a good way to remind yourself to keep it short and simple. So for instance, if I go into this application that isn't working and I'm not really using, um, and I um, add some text. Then I go to my terminal. Um, and I check the status and then do a git add and do a git commit message. Now you can stop there and just type in git commit. When I first started out, I learned about git commit m and then you would type in a message, but you can actually just do git commit and it will take you into your um, your choice t terminal environment. So it can either be vi, nano, or vim. I'm using vim. And you can start typing in your message and then go ahead and save that message. Now, if you look back at that git log, you'll see that it's really long 
and it it makes two lines so it starts getting hard to read already you can see that all the other ones were straight to the point they're right by the hash message and you can scroll through them and see exactly what happened whereas with this one you, you're like oh, I have to read so much and it gets pretty annoying really fast so let's go ahead and undo that all right and this time I'm just gonna keep it short and simple um, all right, there we go. Guess I got a little bit nervous there, but uh, that's that's gonna show up a lot nicer this time around. See, it's on the same line, just like all the other ones. It's very nice to read. Now, as far as the seventy-two uh, wrapping part, again. It, you can't really do that in the terminal. You'll either have to use Vim, V, or Nano, or do it inside of your IDE. I believe um, Adam has something where you can start doing Git messages and merging and rebasing and things like that inside of the IDE, but I haven't downloaded that plugin. Personally, I like doing everything inside of the terminal. I think it's uh, not more professional, but just easier. It's faster for me. The only thing I do not do inside the terminal is uh, merge conflicts. Uh, I don't. I haven't gotten used to the visual part of that, and I think it is simpler in IDE. But as far as everything else, I just use the terminal. So again, I don't press the 5072 part on myself, and it's not pressed on me by my um, superiors. But I feel like remembering that that is a thing will help you keep your uh, commit messages to the point and short. Now I want to talk about some other things that I definitely use at my job and I first found out about it through this blog post by Chris Beam. I think he goes into a lot of detail and explains it really well how important Git commit messages are but I just want to talk about it from my perspective. So we're going to start off by talking about um, using the body of the commit message to explain why versus how. So let's uh, do a commit message and let's do the long form. And we're just gonna say simply that uh, we that we added text to the README. Now, as far as the body, we're gonna go ahead and put um, that we are demoing a video for YouTube. And I think uh, putting the why, when, when other people, other developers go behind you and look at your commit messages, they can see all this information. And sometimes you need to know why they did it in order to understand what's going on inside of your code. Just sometimes just a simple commit message isn't enough. And there's, there are times when other people want to know why you did something, especially if you didn't put comments in your code, especially if you didn't have an in-depth conversation before they took over the project. It's always good to go back and look through these commit messages and understand the intent behind what that other developer did. So then the next thing that we're going to talk about is um, demoed already on the screen. You can see that right after that initial um, summary, I put a space after the the after that <laughs> and you can see that it looks better than just having no space there it looks better than this you can see automatically that with that space you know the difference between the summary and the body it's very stylized it's easier to read and that's one thing that you want to be consistently aware of like is this easy for another developer to come in and see what i'm talking about is easier for them to understand is it easy for them to uh, immediately know what's going on instead of having to decipher things you never want to pass on something to someone else and have them be like oh what's going on so <laughs> uh, put that space in between there so the next thing you want to do is make sure you capitalize every single git commit message. It It's more visually appealing, it's easier to see, and that's what this is all about. Um, being able to quickly understand what's going on, quickly see it, and identify a commit message. Um, also, you don't want to add any periods. 
the whole 50 characters thing explains it all. You're you have limited space and a period is just wasting letters. It's just like in Twitter, if you have a certain amount of characters you, you can use, you're not gonna waste space using a period. So don't do that. Use the imperative mode when you're making commit messages. And that is not using uh, past tense, uh, future tense, like don't say added or adding, just say add. And that is when you're saying a command. So add text to the readme. If you can finish a sentence, I will add text, I will fix this, I will do that, then you're always gonna have that imperative mode, that imperative way of writing your commit messages. And it actually follows what GitHub is already doing. So if you go on GitHub and you merge something, or if you go on GitHub and do some rebasing, it'll automatically say merge this. It's not gonna say merging or merge, it's gonna say merge, it's gonna be a command, because that's what they did. Um, so. By doing this, you're actually following the style that GitHub and Git already promotes, and that's gonna make everything more uniform. All right, and that looks way better than any other way that you've probably been doing it. It looks better to have all those styles so that everybody's on the same page and that you can expect to go in knowing exactly what you're gonna see. Okay, so now I hope that you're more aware of how you're writing your git commit messages. And hopefully that once you start getting on a team and you work with other people, they will really appreciate the thought that went into um, writing those messages and how you're styling them. I think once you start going through that git log, you'll appreciate it yourself because it'll be easier to read. It'll be that one line, simple to go through, and you'll be able to do something that I wanna talk about in another video, which is git rebasing because when you get rebased, you're gonna have to go through that log and understand where in time you wanna go back to. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And I would love to see you on other social networks such as Twitter, Instagram. So find me, take some pictures of your terminal doing some different Git log and Git messages and at me or hashtag coding like a boss. And I'll see you next time. Bye.